structural approaches for visual health uh, and, and to how to deal with visual stress also. Um, so there are a couple of community updates we'll just sort of talk about in a bit. Um, so here's the lineup for the next five weeks. I don't think I'll spend the whole time talking about each person, uh, but uh, Dr. Burns is on next week talking about fertility and functional nutrition for that. Drs. Kim and Dr. Bear are talking about functional oral health. Shannon Lavery and Jade are gonna be talking, uh, or actually uh, will be experiencing with them sound healing and yoga. That should be a real treat. And Rebecca Wong, no relation to me, but she is an herbalist up in Toronto and she'll be talking about traditional Chinese medicine. And then Carrie Jones, a doctor of naturopathic endocrinology will be talking about hormone Q&A backed by popular demand there, a second round of hormone Q&A. So we're all excited about that. And then you can look at, uh, I think, Facebook and YouTube and in different places, we have uh, a replay of a discussion that uh, I did on Tuesday about COVID-19, about vaccines, about how to help uh, your health uh, naturally as well. And then, oh, I like these graphics, Jen. <laughs> um, I'm just admiring the graphics and not actually saying the... <laughs> um, Liz Reese is our heart math instructor here at CIH, and she will be talking about de-stressing the nervous system um, in a virtual series, which is basically in February. So if you're interested in that, please message uh, Wendell here. Please let us know. And then here's Dr. Stan. Uh, so I think I will stop my share. Uh, Dr. Stan, thank you so much for being here today with us. Well, thank you, Andrew. I'm, I'm happy to be here. We're going to talk about one of my favorite subjects, vision. And um, hopefully one of the things everyone will get out of this is the difference between eyesight and vision. So we're gonna talk about um, balance, visual stress, um, eye problems associated with COVID. Um, we're gonna talk about uh, reading problems and of course, um, all the digital stress that our children and ourselves are under these days, unprecedented. And doctors like me are kind of nervous about what's going to happen in a few years. So uh, um, next slide. Thank you. So there's way too much visual stress during this COVID mess. And we're going to talk about things that you can do about it. Um, there's a number of things that can be done. Next slide. Um, one of the things that I would refer you to is the current issue of Pathways Magazine. Um, it's digital, it's online. Next slide. Um, and on that, um, on that, I wrote an article about the subject. So we're gonna, a lot of things I won't have time to talk about, but you can, uh, you know, read about it. Uh, go back one slide, please. So we're going to talk about what happens um, with, uh, with digital eye strain and um, COVID, occasional eye twitch, blurry vision, headaches, double vision. Don't forget the anxiety, dryness, redness, scratchy eyes. It's mostly sore eyes and light sensitivity, which is the number the, the one and number one and number two symptom, but fatigue. Uh, neck and shoulder pain, and uh, a big one is reluctance to read. Thank you. Next slide. And, you know, the body can manifest stress in so many different ways, including vision, ocular changes. The good thing is that it can be resolved usually. Um, so, you know, the, the important things that Dr. Wang and, 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 and the group over at uh, at Capital, are talking about is so important, getting out and exercise, uh, lots of sleep, healthy, ideally, mostly plant-based diet. It's amazing the studies that are coming out about plant-based diet and reducing stress, particularly uh, visual stress and breathing exercise, yoga, and meditation. Next slide. Um, so one of the things that's important is uh, uh, what you do with your computer. So we're going to give you some tips, some things to do that'll reduce your stress 
uh, right away, starting today. So position of rest is not straight ahead. It's 20 degrees below horizon, in other words, below eye level. So you want to be 20 degrees. The middle of the screen should be about 20 degrees from your eye level. Um, and at least 20 inches away, and a document holder should be used, anti-glare screen if you need it. Not everyone needs that, can reduce glare. And it's important to um, uh, work with po proper posture. Next slide. And posture is so important because 20% uh, of the optic nerve fibers never go to the brain. They go right to neck and back and shoulders and other postural mechanisms, which is why I love to work with chiropractors and osteopathic physicians and physical therapists and especially massage therapists. Um, adjusting the lighting is important, changing your lighting on your device to minimize glare and use natural lighting whenever possible. Uh, many of you are reading on Kindle as I am and uh, it's wonderful. You don't have to go to the library to return the book. Uh, when you borrow a book from the library on Kindle, but uh, make sure you reduce that, uh, that, uh, that lighting. You want it to be uh, minimal blue light uh, coming in and blue light blockers whenever possible. Next slide. Um, so we also emphasize this 20-20-20 rule. So every 20 minutes, you force yourself to blink whenever you're reading using the Kindle computer, any close work. Uh, blink a few times, look away out the window at least 20 feet away um, for at least 20 seconds to refocus your eyes, giving your eyes at least a 10 minute break each time you spend two hours looking at anything within arm's reach and especially electronic device. So every 20 minutes, look at least 20 feet away for how long, at least 20 seconds. Now, one of the reasons eye doctors are hung up on 2020 is that when someone looks at 20 feet and beyond, the eyes are physiologically at rest. And whenever you look at anything within 20 feet, uh, particularly up close, the eyes have to work. So you wanna get your eyes resting as often as you can. So I don't ask you to get out and measure 20 feet, but looking out the window as often as you can, very important. Next slide. And so in addition to getting the right glasses prescription, there's vision therapy, we'll talk more about that in a minute, blue blockers, anti-glare filters, tinted lenses. Uh, this can reduce the frequency of these symptoms. Next slide. So what is vision therapy? So you think about it as uh, kind of like physical therapy for the visual brain. Um, I'm referred to as a behavioral optometrist or functional optometrist. I'm also called a holistic optometrist. Vision plays a huge role in learning and there's so much more that, uh, to vision than 2020 eyesight. Think of uh, uh, eyesight as being a small part of vision. So a strong visual system is so important. Next slide. So vision therapy is an individualized program designed to correct visual motor and perceptual cognitive deficiencies, but particularly when there's visual stress. Next slide. So there's nine ways. Uh, these are nine of the most common reasons why people come to see doctors like me. I wish I could tell you that every eye doctor looks at vision. Uh, every eye doctor looks at eyesight but a small percentage of us look at vision, just like not every doctor uh, looks is a functional medicine specialist like Dr. Wong. Um, so we work with children and adults with reading and learning problems. And you've all heard of lazy eye or amblyopia. Well, patching is not the answer. In fact, NIH did studies to indicate that it's never too late to improve the eyesight and vision in a lazy eye or amblyopic eye, and we don't patch. We're much more effective without patching. Uh, we straighten eyes, that's called strabismus, without surgery. So these are exercises because we're really working at the reason for the strabismus rather than just uh, shortening or lengthening one of the eye muscles. We're working with a lot of athletes, um, a lot of ch children and adults who've had stroke, brain trauma, more on that a little bit later. Um, concussion, it's unbelievable how often 
people have concussion. A uh, study I just recently read that one out of three of us will have a concussion uh, in our lifetime, uh, which is a little scary, but um, we, we see uh, a lot of patients with concussion, uh, myopia, nearsightedness. So, uh, you know, doctors who just keep giving stronger and stronger glasses without giving the opportunity to uh, try and control it or reduce it are really practicing in terms of what we knew 20, 30, 40 years ago. So um, headaches from visual stress, uh, whenever there's frontal headaches, a lot of doctors will tell you, uh, family practitioners, pediatricians, internists, that when you have frontal headaches in the front, forehead, um, that is a vision problem unless proven otherwise. So I get a lot of referrals from doctors with patients who have frontal headaches and they've tried all kinds of things, including MRIs and CT scans and even narcotics. Um, helping tired eyes in their workplace. We're all spending way too much time on the computer, particularly these days. And we work with children and adults who have developmental delays. Next slide, please. So there is vision related learning problems, not just children. We have uh, adults with these learning problems as well. You're still learning even uh, uh, when you're an adult and it can be jerky eye movements, squinting, blurry vision, headaches, head tilting. Um, but uh, one of my favorite uh, uh, sentences is smart in everything but school. We have a number of children and adults who are very smart, not so much with paper and pencil and doing close work, low self-esteem is another symptom, temper flare-ups, crying, attention span, fatigue, frustration, daydreaming. Next slide. So there are performance cues. In other words, um, avoidance of doing close work. Um, one of my favorite patients was a uh, judge who was referred to me by his eye doctor. Um, and he had the, the best prescription eyesight 2020 and he kept going from eye doctor to eye doctor and no one could figure out why he uh, avoided reading this is a judge he has to read for his work uh, he actually had his law clerks uh, tape recording summaries which he would listen to every every day so he can make his decisions because every time he tried to read and not very interesting that small print that judges and lawyers have to read but he would fall asleep so uh, his eye doctor referred him to me. We worked with him uh, twice a week for three months. And um, he started reading for pleasure. He's the happiest guy in the world. Uh, people lose their place, omit letters, uh, reread letters, confusing words, failure to recognize the same word, problems copying, book held too close, um, inconsistent poor sports performance and the labels are unbelievable from uh, incorrect labels from these kinds of vision related learning problems, including slow learner and ADD uh, and medication. Of course, medication does work when there really is ADD or ADHD. But um, first, that should be a, a diagnosis of last resort. We need to look at other things before we go to medication. That's just my philosophy. Next slide. And lazy eye, um, one eye sees well and the other eye doesn't. And um, a lot of people don't even know because who closes an eye to see which eye is seeing better? Um, next, uh, next slide. And glasses, contact lenses, um, patching, surgery. Um, uh, studies have been shown through uh, the National Eye Institute that vision therapy, um, procedures done in a doctor's office uh, help equalize vision in both eyes, improve eye coordination, and can restore clear vision. And you're never too old to uh, improve your eyesight when there is amblyopia or lazy eye. Next slide. Strabismus, when both eyes are not pointing in the same direction, one eye might turn in or out or up or down. Um, now, of course, when the eye is turning in so much, you can't even tell what color it is. There's no therapy for that person. We need a surgeon to straighten the eyes and then we do the therapy. But when the eye turns in sometimes or turns out sometimes or up sometimes, causing some uh, blurry vision or intermittent double vision, those are patients that are highly successful with an office-based vision therapy prescribed by a doctor. Um, next slide. 
So when I might turn in, when I might turn out, uh, to avoid seeing double, many times what happens, particularly with children, but I've seen a lot of adults do it, is they read like this. In other words, they get rid of one eye. And of course, when one eye is uh, only one eye is being used, there's no more double vision. Next slide. So it's glasses, therapy, eye muscle surgery. Um, the surgery, in my opinion, is last resort. Next slide. So we use lenses. Um, we use uh, uh, procedures that are done at home and done in the office. Uh, we use therapeutic lenses. Now, of course, there's uh, uh, people call them corrective lenses. They're really compensatory lenses because the glasses, the regular glasses you get from an eye doctor, they aren't correcting anything. You know, they're compensating for either nearsightedness or farsightedness or astigmatism. So we use therapeutic lenses, lenses that are used for vision, prisms, um, and filters, occluders, eye covering one eye, partial occluders, number of electronic targets, uh, computers, software, and uh, balance. Uh, remember 20% of the optic nerve fibers never go to the brain. They go to uh, neck, back, and shoulders. So balance is so important uh, in terms of uh, reducing visual stress. Next slide. This is a really good book that uh, you know, any of you interested in this subject want to learn more. This is a book written for the public, uh, The Hidden Link Between Vision and Learning. Um, uh, she put, a, she put uh, children on the cover, but it's just as much about adults as children. So many learning disabled people are misdiagnosed. Uh, next slide. And uh, this is a book that I did get Montgomery County Library. Uh, my office is in Bethesda, uh, also in Annapolis. I got Montgomery County Library and Anne Arundel County Library to uh, purchase this book. So you can just check it out of the library. Uh, next slide. So I wanna talk about visual fitness and how it may be affecting your life. Okay, now I call it internet eyes. Way too much time, even before COVID on the computer, we're not meant to spend all day long looking at uh, 16, 20 inches. We're meant to hunt and fish and do distance things. That's what used to happen uh, when the dinosaurs roamed the earth. And um, reading, um, one of the pioneers in my, my field said, reading is something that is socially compulsive. He said this in the 1930s, actually, because uh, what I do is not, uh, the concept is not new. The procedures we use is brand new, things we didn't even have a few years ago. But he said reading is something that's co socially compulsive, yet biologically unacceptable. We aren't made to do it, uh, causing a number of problems. The night driving nightmare. How many of you really don't want to drive at night or get your spouse to drive at night? or get, uh, take an Uber, you, can't not, you don't wanna take an Uber these days unless you have to, um, but um, you know, night driving nightmare. Most of my colleagues, what they do is give you a little stronger glasses uh, when you have problems driving at night. That frequently doesn't do it. Uh, it can be a problem with getting the eyes to work together and um, really uh, the peripheral vision is so important. So what is normal vision? The ability to process information centrally or peripherally? based upon the task. Um, and so uh, we want people to be able to shift gears from peripheral to central. So if I am uh, really just central processing, like paper towel holders, like bounty paper towel holders, it's like no disease, but I really don't notice things out here. Um, and let's say my keys are right there. If I'm very central, I'm looking for my keys all over my desk and I can't find my keys. Picture, two bounty paper towel holders looking for your keys on your desk. So the only way I can find my keys is I have to be peripheral, be able to see the whole desk, and then I have to shift to central processing. And that is something that uh, most of us learn how to do on our own, but about uh, one out of five don't learn unless they're taught. And that's the big problem, shifting from central to, to peripheral and then back to peripheral, counting the pages. Oh, I'm reading this journal. I work with a number of doctors uh, and lawyers and therapists who have all these professional journals they have to read. And after spending all day long on the computer and emailing, 
and electronic records, they're counting the pages until they have until they can put that journal away because uh, it makes them fall asleep. And there's a number of things we can do. There are no glasses to fix that, but developing visual skills like focusing, being able to sustain focus, eye movement control, uh, binocularity, getting the eyes to work together. Uh, so many people are just so tired, particularly these days, I call it too tired to get a life. So, um, you know, I, I just started working with a, uh, uh, a CPA, and this is his busy time of the year, so his eye doctor refer. Most of my patients are, come from referrals, either patients referring them or other doctors. Uh, my reputation, and I practice with my son. My son is my partner. He's also board certified in vision therapy, as I am. And our reputation <coughs> among eye doctors is if... Uh, uh, you got a patient in the chair, you don't know what to do with them, send them to Dr. Applebaum because he loves the difficult patients. I really do because I can frequently help them, not always, but frequently can. Um, sports vision, we number, work with a number of athletes. We work with professional athletes, uh, amateur athletes. How many of you have heard, gone to the eye doctor, you've received new glasses, they're not quite right. You go back to the doctor, they check you again, they check the glasses, and then they say, oh, just wear them, you'll get used to them. Well, don't let anybody ever say that again, because you will get used to them. Vision is very adaptable, uh, there's neuroplasticity, um, but you don't want to get used to somebody's mistake. Glasses, unless they're therapeutic lenses, should be comfortable right away. And many people use books to just fall asleep, uh, seem to sleep, and that, that, that's the only time you get tired when you're reading, that's great. You don't need a sleeping pill. Uh, you know, it's a cheap uh, uh, a sleeping pill, a cheap a sleeping pill without any side effects. But if you're reading and you feel tired and you're sleepy in the middle of the day, that's a problem. And um, we frequently can, uh, can help pay those patients and developing patients um, who uh, need to improve their visual fitness for sports, for, um, um, for activities. Uh, I have a number of patients who when referred to me just because they wanna improve their golf game. Can you believe it? Um, I, I, there's some very serious golf, mm. golf players in Montgomery County. <laughs> Dr. Applebaum, yes. there's a patient, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's someone on the webinar here, um, Audrey, she, she has a good question. Do uh, mm -hmm. uh, you mind if I just read that and you can- Oh, sure. Thank you. Um, I just received my first prescription for glasses um, up until now, Audrey, uh, um, yeah, it says up until now, I've been able to use reading glasses. Um, I've recently failed the eye exam at the motor vehicle place. Um, and is there anything I can do to, to strengthen or improve the eyesight? No history of glaucoma, but I've noticed a more rapid decline of eyesight. Recently, can eye exercises help? Yes. Um, I'm going to make a shameful plug for my book. I wrote a book called Eye Power, E-Y-E-P-O-W-E-R. And there's a slide if we get to it later on, um, but you can just go to Google or Amazon, Eye Power. Um, and chapter 10 in the book is uh, uh, home procedures, specific procedures that can be done. I would suggest um, that uh, if you want to try and do something about this, you first start with things you can do on your own at home. There's checklists on my website, applebombvision.com. People like to self-diagnose. And if you're unable to see improvements, um, then certainly make an appointment with a doctor like me or my son, and we are a number of options available to you. It's frequently a problem with the central peripheral relationships that I just described. Because if you're very central, you're gonna have problems seeing far away like street signs. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, thank you. Okay, next slide. So I wanna talk about the person who has learned to block out his surroundings in order to read on the subway may have trouble retrieving his peripheral vision when driving at night. 
So we've all seen people on the subway. Uh, well, they used to have the Washington Post and fold it, but now they have it. They're reading on their phone. Okay. And you know, World War III could start. They wouldn't even know this. They're so central. Um, and I want you to think about for a moment, the computer programmer who's learned to shrink the world to the size of a screen for so many hours may have trouble expanding that world back to the real size in order to play golf, tennis, volleyball, <laughs> or see street signs. That may be the problem with the question you just asked me. So next slide. So what does everyone see? Okay. So I don't have a pointer, but uh, I will answer my own questions. <laughs> what do you see? Of course, you see the people on the right looking at water. Everybody sees that in the trees. Okay. Um, does uh, anybody see anything else? All right, Audrey. All right. Have you seen this before, Audrey? Very good. The baby. Does everybody see the baby? Um, perhaps, Jen, you could outline the baby. Do you see it? It's a big baby looking up. There it is. See oh, it? yeah. Oh, wow. The way in the left. Okay. So see what Dr. Wang just said? He said, aha, there it is, right? <laughs> okay. Now, anytime you see the slide, you will always see this baby, right? Because what happened, we now know from functional MRI testing that when Dr. Wang said, ah, there's a baby, for certain visual centers in the brain would light up if he was getting, being given a functional MRI at this point. Um, and that's what we do in therapy. We create all these ahas to create pathways or to reestablish pathways to reduce visual stress. Next slide. So here's something you can do at home. And this is, goes back to the question I was just asked. If you uh, take out a piece of paper, not now, not now, just listen. And you uh, just write a bunch of C's all the way around and then B's like that and then A's like that, like in a square. And I wrote the word clear in the middle, but you could put an X in the middle, whatever you want to do. So you look at the word clear and then with your side vision, try and get all the A's in focus. Don't look at the A's, only look at the word clear, expanding your peripheral vision. Keep looking at the word clear, then get all the B's in focus. And then once you get all the B's, keep looking at the word clear, don't look at anything but clear, get all the C's in focus. And then once you have the C's, then get the B's, then get the A's. And of course, if you hold this piece of paper that looks just like that, you know, across the room, everyone will get that, that's easy. But if you take it and bring it close, you're, you're really working on your peripheral vision. The closer you hold it, the more peripheral vision you're really working on. Okay, so I recommend you do this on a piece of paper and hold it right about normal reading distance. So I always like to give uh, groups that I talk to some things that they can start doing right away. Um, and um, this can make a big difference, particularly at night when you are tired and you still have some reading you have to do, open up your periphery, you're gonna be amazed at how you can go longer. Next slide. So, you know, concussion, I talked about what can happen, headaches, disorientation, car sickness, double vision. Next slide. Uh, loss of place, feeling sleepy, dizziness, uncomfortable in crowded places, balance problems. Next slide. So there's also the midline can shift. So the perception of midline can be all the way to the left or to the right. And we have lenses that can bring the world from the left to center or bring it from the right to center. And we have a whole protocol that can tell us what lenses are necessary. These lenses are called prisms. So this happens when a person leans to the side, forward, backwards, um, and they don't want to. It interferes with all aspects of balance, coordination, ambulation. So it's called visual midline shift syndrome. Um, you can Google that and you'll find lots of studies on BMSS. Next slide. So the perception of the midline shifts, effectively treated with office-based vision therapy. By the way, when you get vision therapy, you always want to ask who's doing the vision therapy. Um, we have doctors doing the vision therapy in my office. And the reason is um, my wife's an occupational therapist. She practices with us. 
And um, when I first opened my office many years ago, I was going to hire an assistant and teach them how to do vision therapy. She says, I would never let an assistant do the occupational therapy. She said to me, Stan, you're doing the vision therapy. And I said, okay. <laughs> and I never looked back. So that's why we have such a high rate of success because we have doctors actually, do, excuse me, doing the vision therapy and dizziness, um, uh, car sickness, um, people don't have to live with this anymore. Um, when there is car sickness from either concussion or brain injury, or just people who have been car sick forever. Uh, and I don't mean just people, if you read in the back, I get car sick, otherwise I'm fine. I'm not talking about them. Just don't read in the back seat <laughs> and you won't get car sick. But you don't have to live with car sickness between doctors like me and there's a whole group of physical therapists who work on the vestibular system. Um, the two of us, we can get rid of uh, most car sickness. Next slide. Post-trauma vision syndrome, that's another syndrome that's very common. We use lenses and therapy, problems with central and peripheral eye muscle imbalances. Next slide. Dizziness, okay. Next slide. Patient complaint can make the doctor's head spin. So most eye doctors, when you say dizziness, they like uh, give you a look like, okay, maybe you need to see a neurologist or CT scan. So, um, you know, uh, that is something that can be solved in many cases. I'm not talking about brain tumors. I'm not talking about pathological reasons for dizziness. I'm talking about children and adults who've had CT scan, MRI, there's no occupying lesion, there's no pathology, and they still have dizziness unsteadiness, disequilibrium, vertigo, and that's most people who have uh, car sickness. Next slide. So uh, think about eyesight and vision. Eyesight's the ability to see up 20 feet. Vision goes way beyond this. So I would ask everybody, uh, as the price of listening to me today, every time anyone says 2020 eyesight, um, please correct them. If someone says 2020 vision, please correct them. It's 2020 eyesight. So you don't hear people talk about 2020 eyesight. It's 20, they talk about 2020 vision. There's no such thing. It's 2020 vision. Next slide. Well, that's uh, one of the procedures that we do. It's called a rotator. And you can see the lenses in the patient's hand and see the red green glasses. So uh, the, the eye with the green lens sees only green, the eyes with the red lens only sees red, um, and it rotates. And that's a golf tee with holes, and the, mat, the, the goal is to get the golf tee in the hole. So we're working on eye movements, focusing, and uh, binocularity. Next slide. So we talked about what vision therapy is. Next slide. Is it strength training for the eyes? No. Um, it, uh, almost all the time, the muscles in the eyes are um, fine. Uh, it's very rare to see problems with weakness of eye muscle, even though that's something that uh, many eye doctors will say, oh, you got a weak eye muscle. Well, no, uh, most eye muscles are, um, uh, have the ability to um, do so much more than they're being asked to do. And when an eye turns in, it is seldom just an eye muscle problem. We, and one of the reasons I call myself a holistic physician or an integrative physician is we don't just treat the symptom. We're looking at the problem. And the problem may be I spend too much time indoors. So the problem may be I need a whole functional medicine workup from Dr. Wong. You, you, you don't just treat the, pro the symptom. Next slide. Mm -hmm. And think of it as physical occupational therapy for the eyes with a cognitive component. Next slide. And so we work with adults and children with ADHD, brain injury, concussion, learning difficulties. The big thing is reluctance to read. Um, most of our patients, when we're finished, find themselves whether they, um, uh, you know, they, they thought they were reading a lot, they're reading so much more. And when they are reluctant to read, um, it's not always ADHD. Uh, it's not always just a learning problem. It could be an, a vision problem and children and adults on the, on the uh, autism spectrum disorder. Next slide. 
And that's my book, iPower. Um, you can get it at uh, iPowerBook.com or just go to Amazon. Chapter 10, Home Procedures. Uh, get it just for Chapter 10. Um, and there's also a number of checklists on there as well, because again, people like to self-identify. Um, so look in the mail, Dr. Wan. You're going to be getting a complimentary copy of my book very oh, soon. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I was about to click <laughs> on it myself using Amazon Prime. For yeah. Let me know. Thank you, Sam. Appreciate All it. All I would ask is that you write a, a critique on Amazon after you read it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, I was going to buy it. Yep. Thank you so much. No, don't um, buy it. You're getting it. Got in the it. Mail. No, I, I appreciate that. We have a couple of questions. I, I know you, sure. you have a few more slides, right? Or uh, Just a couple. Let's, let's um, I would say, um, okay, so one is from an, a web developer, uh, Meredith. She has internet yeah. eyes. Uh, she, you know, she does that for a living, web, web developing. Yeah. Um, she has a, a large floater in the right eye that no one seems to, to do, can, no one can seem to do anything to treat. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm assuming you've had an exam already, an eye exam, Meredith, but um, what, what would you say to that, Dr. Applebaum? Applebaum? Okay, so um, floaters, first of all, what are they? They are blood vessels that we were born with and, um, you know, they break off and they have nowhere to go. So they float around. And as we get older, there's more floaters. Now there is a procedure where they, it's called a vitrectomy where the vitreous is the jelly material. It's 90% of the, of the eye. It's all that liquid in the eye. They can suck all that out and put in a hydrogen bubble and get rid of the floaters. You don't want to do that <laughs> unless you absolutely have to, but it will get rid of the floater. So be very careful. It'll get rid of everything else as well, I guess. Yeah. What I suggest to people who have floaters is that frequently it really bothers them if they're central processors. So we teach them how to process and shift from central to periphery. And they think the floater went away. It didn't. They just don't pay attention to it anymore. It's still there. Do the floater, what's the root cause of the floaters? Why do people get floaters? More well, um, it has to be differentiated from retinal problems. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, flashes and floaters, those are the two things everyone should remember. If all of a sudden you're seeing flashes of light or floaters, you need to see an eye doctor. And if it's in the middle of the night, you go to the emergency room if you don't have an eye doctor. Um, so um, that's a retinal problem. Uh, if we first have to differentiate, make sure it could be a vitreous detachment, which is benign, which is not a big issue. So um, the uh, floaters sometimes will occur when the retina is detaching. And then the floaters, you know, come off of that. Yeah. And um, particularly in diabetics, because of course the blood vessels have nowhere to go and they break off. The, uh, and so um, best thing to do is uh, um, uh, monitor your sugar, get on a plant-based diet and reduce those diabetic symptoms. Get that A1C down. That's right. See our nutrition team for support as well. Absolutely. Okay. Very important. Um, thank you. Thank you, Meredith, for the question. Thank you, Dr. Stan. Um, Laura says she's been a slow reader all of her life. Um, what are the possible reasons in regards to eyesight? Okay. Eyesight or vision? Uh, yeah. Regards, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for, for doing that, Dr. Wong. I, I usually don't correct a question right away, but uh, you did, so that's fine. No, I'm no, not correcting it, just making it more accurate, I guess. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm trying to learn it's, myself. I mean, th this yeah, is it's vision. This is um, a so uh, slow okay. reader can be, there can be so many reasons for being a slow reader. It can be emotional can be um, physiological, it can be, uh, you know, there, there not enough exercise. Now, I would suggest that if you have always been a slow reader and it's interfering and you wanna go faster, um, you know, you can try a speed reading course first. And if that doesn't work, then you need to see an eye doctor like me because once we develop, it's frequently a problem with, uh, the ability to sustain focus and the ability to get the eyes to move together smoothly. So there's two kinds of eye movements. There's oculomotor pursuits, eyes moving, and then saccadic fixations going from one to the other. So slow readers frequently have what are called undershoots. So think of me, my eyes going from one, eye, one finger to the other, but a, a, a slow reader with undershoots would stop in the middle and then get to the other one and then stop in the middle and get to the other one.
And I don't mean just with fingers. I mean, you know, picture that line across the print. Sometimes it's overshooting. So we can, we can work on the eye movements. We can work on binocularity, being able to sustain binocular function longer. And we can work on the focusing system and developing these visual skills and abilities um, when they are deficient can turn a slow reader into a uh, no longer a reluctant reader, a fast reader in just a few months. That's so amazing is, how, how vision yeah. is, is such a huge part of life and how you yeah. know, the way we see things. And um, this is great. Um, Christine asked about health insurance. First of all, are you taking new patients and do you take health insurance? How, how does that work overall? Yes, we are taking new patients and the, the better health insurance companies will reimburse. In other words, um, HMOs, take, yeah. things like that. They don't, mm -hmm. they only pay for doctors in their building, that mm -hmm. type of thing. Mm -hmm. So I would say most of our patients are getting some form of reimbursement, but we don't uh, accept assignment. You pay us, the insurance company reimburses you, and we're helping you get the maximum level of reimbursement. But uh, mm -hmm. around in the Montgomery County area, most people have insurance where you can choose your own doctor. And when you can choose your own doctor, you're going to get probably get some money back from the uh, evaluation and the therapy. Great. Thank you, Dr. Stan. Um, Elizabeth has a good question. You're not too late to this, Elizabeth. Welcome. Um, yeah, she says, um, have you talked about oc ocular migraines? Um, what is your perspective on ocular migraines? That's an interesting perspective from a functional uh, perspective as well. Um, yeah. What is what is your uh, thoughts on what are your thoughts on ocular migraines? Okay, so frequently when you get diagnosed with ocular migraines, um, the word, if you look at the report, it usually says idiopathic ocular migraines. So what does that mean? The doctor has no idea why you're having ocular, why you're having headaches. Idiopathic, right, means, I don't know. Idiopathic maybe. means could yeah. be from any, anywhere. Yeah. Um, so the, with migraines, the question is, do you have aura, the visual aura? Do you have little dots moving around? Uh, do you see sparkling things? Um, but the migraines, you know, depends on the triggers. Now, certain foods can trigger ocular migraines and not enough exercise can trigger ocular migraines. But once we look at all of that, then all that's left besides medication, which is uh, something that uh, most patients don't wanna do, um, is developing visual skills and abilities to really give you some ammunition to deal with when those triggers get set, you have more ammunition, more visual skills in order to uh, fight the tendency towards ocular migraines. <clears throat> From a, from a perspective of functional medicine, migraines is a mitochondrial issue. So I would look at ways to balance the blood sugar, you know, look at potentially food sensitivities, energy inputs like macronutrients, micronutrients, oxygen levels, things like that. Um, that's what I think about in terms of migraines. Some people that are, if they're having a hormonal cycle, then, then menstrual cycles can sometimes be related to ocular migraines, things like that. Absolutely. Thank you for that. Because uh, nutrition, diet, lifestyle, these things have sleep, to be looked at. You know, at obviously sleep, you know, raising that threshold there. Um, yeah. Great. Um, and then I had a question on how the limbic system is really, you know, more, uh, I guess more inflamed is not the right word, but more activated during this COVID pandemic and yes. chronic stress, you know, so are there any eye exercises that help the limbic system? Are there any eye exercises that help with stress, you know, overall? Yes, one of my favorite ones is called thumb rotations. And I will demonstrate it right now. All right. So um, you look at the thumb and you're making circles and you're following the circles around, okay? And then it's getting bigger and you're following it around. And there's two ways to do this. Once you're doing thumb rotations, you're looking straight at the thumb and um, kind of ignoring everything out here. And then the other way to do it is, yeah, you're following the thumb, but you're really noticing that uh, painting on the wall, or you're really noticing what's going on over here, or what person is doing something over there. So in other words, you're really paying attention to periphery while you're doing the thumb rotations. Okay. Um, another one that's very helpful is um, neck rotations. Mm -hmm. So neck rotations, we prescribe this a lot um, where um, you kind of pretend, and this comes from yoga, um, you pretend there's like a, a pencil on your nose and um, you're making circles with the pencil. 
as you look at a fixation target and you want to make sure you go the other way. And frequently what happens, you get to a point where it's kind of tight. You got to breathe through that. That's, that's very important. But um, meditation is, can really make a big difference as well. Um, I meditate daily and, um, you know, pick a favorite meditation video on YouTube and start there. If you meditation don't. is so good for the eyes. I must be more clear. Your eyes are getting rested and basically it's boosting your mitochondria in your eyes. That's yeah, kind of absolutely. About. Well, you know, inflammation is the big enemy. <laughs> and, right. uh, you know, and, and, and of course, um, I've had patients who from just too much visual, visual stress have, have been diagnosed with uveitis, which you can go blind from uveitis. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, um, you know, it's all these really strong eye drops that doctors like to use for uveitis. They're necessary because you don't want to, you know, go coming close to get, getting to be blind. But while you're doing the eye drops, then to uh, deal with the stress. So things like thumb rotations and neck rotations. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, chapter 10 of my book has, has so many different things. Yeah, great. And that's great mm -hmm. how the optic nerve is really um, innervating the, the, like you said, the neck, the, the head, like other parts besides the eye, even though it's called the optic nerve, it's, it's elsewhere too. Yes. Really cool. Um, now, um, are, what are the roles of, of EMFs? You know, e, what are your, what's your thought about EMFs and eye health, you know, in terms of, looking at a computer, looking at cell phones, you know, is there a detrimental effect of too much EMFs in your opinion? That could be a whole nother uh, talk. Have, we'll another, have one sometime this year, I think probably. Uh, yeah, I'll better. tell you, I'm a big proponent of uh, waiting, really avoiding near point activities with kids. I mean, I went to uh, Montgomery County Public Schools and uh, when I was in uh, elementary school, no one read till second grade. And then it became first grade. And you all who have ki young kids, you know, everybody's reading on the first day of kindergarten and nobody's eyes are ready. And doctors like me and my son have never been so busy, particularly what's going on right now. We have people risking COVID um, to come out and because they can't deal with all the visual stress symptoms that oh, yeah. they are yeah. getting. Um, okay, uh, so this is from Kathleen. I had a severe case of vertigo before Christmas, two days after four plus hours of Zoom strain. That's oh yeah. Zoom strain, um, felt wrung out, I guess had internet eye syndrome. Could the eye strain have triggered the vertigo that was so severe that she had to go to the ER? Hmm. In my opinion, absolutely. I mm -hmm. see this often, oftentimes I see this. And um, uh, was it, did you say Elizabeth's question? Uh, this was Kathleen's, uh, Kathleen's question. Okay, so I bet you'll never do that again, four hours on the computer. We're not made to do that. Well, and I, wonder, I wonder if that 2020 might, you know, every so often stare at 20 feet away, would, would, oh, yeah. would, that, would that have helped break that, you know, just to break that? Path? I would go further and say she might not have had the vertigo if yeah. she was, uh, you know, every 20 minutes looking at something at least 20 feet and beyond for at least 20 yeah. seconds. It's a very, very powerful technique. Uh, I strongly recommend it. But you know, in addition to uh, getting out and taking a walk, no one should be looking at a computer four hours straight. Uh, at least halfway through, you should go out and take a walk. Yeah, yeah, every 20 minutes is great. It's the same for the back. It's good to get stretched. And get oh yeah. Uh, you know, stand up from the chair. Um, what do you think about dry eye drops? This is from Christine, another good question. Thanks, Christine. Well, um, everybody's got dry eye, particularly in the winter. Mm -hmm. It's very common. It's uh, I've got colleagues where their whole practice is dealing with dry eye. It's a whole big deal. Um, dealing with the inflammation resulting from the dry eye, dealing from the uh, uh, mybomianitis, dealing with it. There's so many different aspects to it. Um, I'm a... Um, uh, as I mentioned, I'm a holistic integrative uh, physician. And the first thing that I ask patients to do is eight, eight ounce glasses of water religiously, starting with as soon as you wake up in the morning. And in two weeks, I have so many patients that have so much reduced dry eye. 
We just now, don't drink enough water. That's part. We of don't it. drink enough water. Yeah, yeah. No, and I don't mean tea, and I don't mean coffee, and I don't mean juice. You know. And I think I've mentioned this somewhere on one of the webinars, but by the time we're thirsty, it's too late. You know, we're already right. like way behind in terms of hydration. Right. So you, you do have to like do what Dr. Stan says. It's kind of keep chugging it a bit. Uh, maybe take the Zoom break and chug the water <laughs> at the same time. Get well, I would really, I would count it because you'd be surprised how much water that is. Like here yeah. is, I, I, I recycle my Deer Park bottles all the time. So right. nobody should worry about that. But this is half a liter. I'm talking about six of these by yeah. dinner time. Yeah. Six of these by minimum, minimum. That's a lot of water. It is. Um, People will say they can't do it. I've had, you know, acupuncture has also been very effective in my nice. patients. Yeah, with uh, with dry eye, I right. have some patients where it's so painful they uh, have resorted to narcotics, mm. and then they go through acupuncture and vision therapy. No more dry eye. Yeah, that, that's great. Acupuncture is a great tip. Um, vision yeah. therapy. Yeah, I'm a big proponent uh, of acupuncture. Yes, and then would you recommend Mustafa asked? Uh, thank you, Mustafa. Uh, would you recommend boric acid for eye maintenance? I've, I've never heard of that for eye maintenance. Boric no. acid. No, no I don't. Uh, maybe Mustafa, you could uh, elaborate a bit on that. Um, I think we got through most of the questions, if not all of the questions so far. Um, what, what would you say your big takeaways are for people and during, especially during COVID right now, how, how, to, how to preserve their eye health? Yeah, I, I would say, um, you know, get outside. You know, I, I, I've never, before walked in the rain, unless I all of a sudden it's raining. Until now, now I got a parka <laughs> with a rain. <laughs> I'm out walking. Yeah. Got to walk every day in nature. It's a great um, idea. Yeah. Mill too, but it's not the same. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. Yeah, so good. Yeah, nature walks so important. Getting out and walking, and you know, it's simple things can make a huge difference. And looking at that natural landscape, looking at 20 feet away is going to rest your eye. That's what I learned today right. about how you're basically resting your eye muscles, giving, giving, that a, giving them a break when you're doing that. Now, I frequently walk on the CNO Canal. You'll see me there. Mm -hmm. And there's so many people walking. And where are they looking? At their cell phone in their right. hand. There's a beautiful scenery, <laughs> but they're not <laughs> looking at right? the latest. Uh, yeah. That's, the front page of one of my journals came out last year and it had uh, six or seven uh, uh, five, fifth or sixth grade students, uh, kids on the front porch, um, and they all were looking at their iPhone. And that was the picture on the front page. And the caption was outdoor play in 2019. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so back to the boric acid. So Amber's father, so Amber's. Um, Father used it 50 years ago, used boric acid 50 years ago frequently for uh, styes and eye health. That's interesting. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, gonna look more research into that. So if you're concerned about styes, there's a very natural treatment that, uh, well, it does require some, uh, some uh, ointment, but uh, um, uh, silver ointment you can get over the counter uh, uh, from the pharmacist, mm -hmm. ocular ophthalmic silver ointment can you know that can get rid of the sty you put oh, it right now yeah. that's great yeah and also there's um if you look at uh there's a, a product called sty s-t-y-e i've seen it in cbs that has the silver ointment in it that really does work great um is orally ingesting flaxseed oil good for eye care yes the flaxseed uh, and, and omega threes, I would say as well. Yeah. Omega three is very important. Yeah, right. and and there's a lab core test to check on there too. Omega check. I'm yep. curious about uh, our uh, for our audience and also for myself that that could wear contacts. I mean, I don't wear contacts now, but you know what I what I realize is by not wearing contacts, my my prescription got got uh, weaker, meaning I didn't need as much glasses help. Have you? Yes. With with people and, and how does that work? Well, with contact lenses, it's uh, challenging to take them off. Yeah. With glasses, boom, they come right. off. So, so many of my patients, I mean, I, there's those books called Take Off Your Glasses and See. That's not what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about really 
opening up the periphery because when you're nearsighted particularly and the glasses are on and the contact lenses are on it's really forcing you to become very central and if you take the glasses off think about the visual demands like for example um, there unless you're extremely nearsighted you can do an awful lot of things with what we call naked vision in your house no glasses mm -hmm. or clothes right. you know naked vision means no glasses no contact lenses i'm a big proponent of naked vision um great and then um another thing that i was reading at some point was that if you wear contacts i'm sorry if people wear contacts here there um but it, is there some blockage of the oxygen that happens from the lens you know that, that that's not as big of a problem anymore no okay so the, the ones yeah. that are out now is they're not yeah there. there's very high oxygen permeable contact lenses Got it. Great. and one of good, the things we news. specialize in is called orthokeratology or ortho k and that's using contact lenses to um, very gently um, compress the corneal epithelial cells you it's fda approved for overnight wear so mm -hmm. in other words you wear the you wear these ortho k lenses at night while you're sleeping, you don't feel them. You take them off and you see great all day. Yeah, yeah, no, that's great. Uh, this is a better technology now. Laura asked, and this might be a appropriate question also for next week's speaker, yeah. Dr. Anina Burns talking about fertility, but um, are there any supplements or foods during pregnancy for the developing baby? I'm assuming you, you're talking about their eyesight and help, help with their eyes. Well, healthy lifestyle. I wouldn't say there's any specific supplements. It's not like folic acid where every you know, pregnant woman needs to take folic acid. It's not like that. Um, you know, I don't necessarily require double blind placebo controlled multi-center studies to make that's recommendations, good, they but, be coming out to the, <laughs> right, but there's funding. not anything that's really been, you know, pretty clear, convincing to make a difference. Right. There is for fetal brain development. I don't know about that. Yes. Doctor, there was the DHA is obviously a part mm -hmm. of it. Um, Joe asked, uh, cataract lenses, any advice for cataract lenses? Yes. Um, these days, they want to put in the bifocal cataract lens. In other words, a cataract means a clouding of the eye, normal aging changes. Everyone's going to get cataracts. It's not a disease. Okay, if you live long enough, you're going to get cataracts. So what they do is they take a little, little tiny little vacuum cleaner, they stick in your eye and suck out the lens, and then they put in a, an implant. Okay, and the big thing now is bifocal implants. I don't like those. Mm -hmm. Don't like those at all. Um, the single because it's but convenient. They say, well, you don't need glasses because um, you got you know like wearing bifocal glasses. There's no big deal about wearing reading glasses over the single vision implants for distance. Mm -hmm. That's what I recommend. Single vision implants for distance. It's a simpler approach, much less risk. And frequently these bifocal contact uh, implants have to be um, enhanced. So that, that's a nice word of saying they have to go in the eye and do something because <laughs> they've got this, think about it, the lens can't move or else you're looking through the near part of the part of the lens when you're driving and that's not what you want to do. Okay, so they have better lenses now. Yeah. The other thing about cataracts um, is um, don't let any surgeon um, try and talk you into one implant for distance and one for reading. That is not good. We have two kidneys. We need two kidneys. We have two eyes. We need two eyes. Hmm. Um, I oh, see. Oh, like disabling one eye, essentially. Yeah, it's, mon it's called monovision. They do that sometimes with contact lenses. Yeah. They do it with cataracts. Yeah, it works, but at what price? Yeah, yeah, it sounds like a pretty high price to pay. Yeah, a lot of falls. A lot of falls with elderly with monovision. You don't want that. Well, um, Dr. Applebaum, and, and, um, and I think you have a pretty big practice. What I was reading on your website is that you have, you're the first practice in the nation to integrate vision therapy with occupational therapy. We are. Yeah, my wife's an OT, and uh, I'm a, uh, um, a vision therapy optometrist. Nobody was doing this when yeah. we first got together. Yeah, we've had a number of people come visit, and now we have a few practices around the country that... Uh, are uh, imitating us and we feel very flattered that they have chosen to do that. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Alpabon, for coming on. And this has been very enlightening and should I say eye-opening to all of us. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I was gonna say that to the end. Um, 
I also am interested if we have like a couple of minutes, I know we're running a little over here, but I'm interested in your work with the um, IHPC. Can you tell us a little bit more about the Integrative Health uh, sure. Consortium and what that means? Basically, just for everyone here, um, here um, there's a group of people in Washington trying to change the way that healthcare is delivered, the content of healthcare, what we're actually doing in terms of integrative health, how can we bring this out to more people across the nation? So that's my understanding of things, but um, maybe you have a much deeper understanding of this. Yeah, I'm on the board of, it's called IHPC, Integrative Health uh, Policy Consortium. So this is a group that was formed right when Obamacare went online in the beginning um, and uh, trying to get alternative, they called it alternative back then, medicine covered by healthcare with Obamacare, chiropractic, acupuncture, massage. We tried so hard and we've been more successful with certain administrations. Um, not this one that's about to end, not real successful with them, but we're encouraged with a new administration. So we have chiropractors, osteopaths, um, massage therapists, homeopaths uh, on the board of directors. And if you go to IHPC, Integrative Health Policy, uh, consortium, C is in charlie.org. You can read all about it. And we do uh, congressional meetings uh, where our goal is to prevent and get rid of all barriers to health, particularly complementary and integrative health. So wouldn't it be wonderful if all that the insurance work would yeah. pay? You you know, Thank that you so would be much. wonderful. So yeah, um, yeah, everybody should go visit that. It's a really interesting yes, group and I represent Vision and, you know, yeah. uh, actually it's a funny story. Quickly, I was, yeah. uh, when I was asked to come on board, they said, uh, um, you know, you're gonna represent all the eye doctors in the country. I said, really? <laughs> you, know, you know what I do? I, you know, you, don't you want a glaucoma specialist or a cataract specialist? No, no, we know what you do. You know, yeah. so it's it's difficult to find a holistic, uh, um, integrative vision care practitioner mm -hmm. who, who really integrates. And I, I talk about integrating traditional with non-traditional. It's certainly, I mean, you, you have an infection. I'm calling in a prescription for right. the pharmacy, but we try everything else. Well, first. it's great to find you here. Thank you for being part of the CH community and uh, coming on for this webinar. It's been so informative. And so thank you so much again, Dr. Sam. You're very welcome. Everyone stay healthy. All right. Have a great week, everyone. I'll see you again next week. Bye. Bye.